This video is intended to be a comprehensive and meticulously detailed resource to provide you the information you need to fully inform your purchasing decisions, whether that be with TLB Mallorca or any other shoe company. In this video, I will first open it up to reveal the shoe and explain why I chose that particular model. I'll go over every single detail of construction and materials and then highlight the notable design elements and design choices of the shoe. However, these shoes do not merely exist in a void, but instead a market full of other shoes. So to get a better idea of the value of the product, I'll be comparing them to the similarly priced and almost identically designed Allen Edmonds Park Avenue. Then we'll shine them up and see how they look. So here opening it up, we've got the right shoe and then oof, the left shoe. Let's talk about the shoe and why I chose it. So this is the 198 Artista. It comes on the Van Gogh last in black box calf. This retails for about $400 with free shipping, free size exchanges, and free sizing guidance. So let's start with construction and materials. What are you physically getting with this product and how do each of those components compare to what you would typically see on the market at this price point? We will start with the exterior materials and then move more towards the interior. To start off, this is a Goodyear welted shoe. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of construction, but the important point to make is that this is perfectly standard at this price point. Okay, moving on to the materials now. Bonus points to whoever can guess what this is. This shoe has flat laces. That's what comes with the model. I personally really like flat laces. Flat laces have historically been looked down on a little bit because of their association with sneakers. However, I think if they're done well, they look perfectly fine. Next, moving on to the upper leather. This comes from Anna which is a tannery in France. It's a highly reputable tannery known for putting out some of the best leather in the world. This is really clean leather. I mean, I go over these shoes with like a microscopic level of detail in preparation for these videos, and I cannot find a single blemish at all. And usually I can, even on shoes that are far more expensive. Moving down to the bottom of the shoe, we have the outsole. This is, again, just a very standard piece of vegetable tan leather. We'll talk more about the finishing later on. Down to the heel block, you have the top lift, which is this bottom layer here. This is a combination heel, which refers to that half rubber, half leather, just helps provide a little more traction. And of course, you could have it entirely rubber, but having the half leather bit is a sign of quality and craftsmanship. Additionally, on the bottom, you can see these heel nails here, just adds a little decorative touch to the shoe. Now moving back up the shoe, you've got the heel stack layers here. They are fairly even and fairly well done. The welt, this is a 360 degree welt, totally normal for this price point. And then moving into the shoe, we'll talk about these later. You have the insole, which is full leather. Sometimes that can be leatherboard or fiberboard or even some kind of synthetic foam material. Being real leather, this will just to help mold to your foot over time and make for a more comfortable fit. Then you have the upper lining, calfskin from NNA, as well as the sock liner here. And now we're gonna move to the interior non-visible components of the shoe. Starting with the heel counter, the heel counter is a piece of material that stretches Around the heel, it goes in between the upper and the lining. It provides a little more structure to the shoe as well as molding to your foot over time. At this price point, you would expect to see leatherboard and you probably wouldn't expect to see leather for like another few hundred dollars going up the ladder in price. This uses leather. It is an impressive quality of craftsmanship to have leather in the shoe. It's, it's in some ways kind of unreasonable. Uh, which is what makes this shoe so special. Now moving around to the toe stiffener, which is a similar piece of material which is sandwiched between the lining and the upper of the shoe to provide extra structure and stiffness. And then the shank, which is just a rectangular piece of material that extends from the heel to the midfoot. Typically you wanna see a steel shank and that is exactly what you do have here. Then we have the cork. So this shoe, because the shank takes up space in the heel and you already have the sock liner for cushion, this does not have cork in the heel. It has cork only in the mid and front foot. It's great, it's where you want it. It'll help provide that sort of molding and fitting to your foot over time that we all really love about quality leather shoes. And then lastly, the thread that holds this whole shoe together. It is blended, so it is part synthetic, part natural, pretty standard at this price point.
And believe it or not, that is everything about the construction and materials. So now we're gonna move on to the design elements of the shoe. This is the fun part, as if this whole thing isn't just an absolute riot. Starting off, let's talk about the last of the shoe. Now, this is the Van Gogh last, which is a newer last by TLB Mallorca. It has a soft, chiseled toe. This tends to make for a little more of what you would call a contemporary shoe. It's a little more sleek, more angular. The first thing is asymmetry. So you'll notice when you look at the shoe from straight on, you'll see there's a very aggressive asymmetrical curve down on the exterior of the foot. And this asymmetry leads to a really beautiful curve down the front of the shoe. And that leads to my second point, which is complex curvature overall. So a quality shoe, you usually want to see a lot of different curves going on to it. This curve coming down the instep, you have this curve on the interior of the shoe, the heel, you have these subtle small curves where the upper meets the last. That is a, first of all, it's just a beautiful sculptural quality, but it's also a sign of craftsmanship. Now the last more objective hallmark I look for in a last is the heel. When you look at the heel directly from the back, you wanna see really a large sort of bulbous shape near the bottom, which will reflect how your heel is actually shaped. This is all of it, much better than you would expect at $400. There's a lot of complexity in the geometry going on here that you would not typically see at this price point. So that's the last. Now I wanna move on to the next design element, which is this little stitch here. This is called the stay stitch. It's small, it's inconspicuous. You can hardly notice it, but it is visible on the shoe. And I think the craftsmanship of this tiny little piece of thread can really reflect the attention to detail paid to the overall shoe. So you can see here, this is done very well. It's very tight to the vamp. It's just kissing the vamp perfectly. And then speaking of stitching, the next element I like to look at is just the overall stitch cleanliness. You know, you have a beautiful tight dual parallel stitch here on the vamp and toe cap. They're perfectly uniform. And even on the interior, the lining of the shoe where you again would expect corners to be cut, the stitching is all very clean and very tightly bound together. The next thing I wanna talk about is this stitch here. This stitch is a swan's neck. It's very beautiful. It adds again a little bit more movement to the overall shoe. You'll notice this has a very harsh drop here into the vamp line. The degree of drop is almost exactly mirrored in the vamp in the swan's neck. Starting with the stitch density on the uppers, these have a stitch density of 14 stitches per inch. Around this price point, you typically see somewhere between eight and 12. So 14 is very impressive. And then on the welt, the stitch density for the sole stitch is eight stitches per inch, which again is very impressive. At this price point, you typically see four to six. And then this welt is fudged, which refers to these indents here. And sometimes they can be very light and seem almost drawn on. These, you can tell, they're really deep imprints. We're gonna look at the welt and outsole joints. So of course the welt and outsole are attached here. They have a seam, but if I try to catch my finger on it, the first thing to notice is I can't catch it going from the top down, but I can catch it just barely going from the top up. If I apply just a little bit of pressure, my fingernail pops off. And then the last joint is going to be on the heel stack. So let's look at the heel stack layers. It's even a little better than on the sole edge. Really can't even catch my fingernails at all. It's sanded perfectly flush, which is wonderful. It's dyed perfectly uniform. And then it also has this lovely wheeling here. This is simply a decorative wheeling to add just a little bit of an extra touch to what would otherwise be a rather plain surface. Now the heel layers are another point of craftsmanship. So these layers, typically you wanna see them straight, evenly put, and that is exactly what you have here. And then notice the top edge of the heel stack. You'll see it has this very nice bevel here to help give that impression that the upper is sort of lifted up off the heel and just give it a little bit of lightness. And then the last note on the heel block is just how tight it is to the heel, you really want to see the upper extend out beyond the heel. Because if the heel extends beyond the upper, it almost always results in a shoe that is too heavy and unbalanced on the back end. Now moving down to the sole of the shoe, this is where we get to the fun part. This is my favorite thing to look at on shoes. I think it's so great, specifically because it will disappear and that's what makes it so special. This is a standard leather sole. It has a lovely burnishing on it. 
this is the most important thing to point out, a closed channel sole. It just results in a much cleaner sole because you don't have that groove with the exposed stitching showing. Now moving down the shoe, you can see this bevel on the sole. And what I really like about that bevel is you have this beautiful curved sculpture on the top of the shoe and the bottom is just flat, but just adding that little bevel there really balances out the whole geometry of the shoe. And this waist is also unusually narrow. This is a two and a quarter inch waist. And then moving down to the top lift, you have these decorative brass nails here, which adds a little bit of finesse to what otherwise would be a rather plain part of the shoe. Now we've talked about the beveled sole. This is the beveled waist where the straight sole edge becomes rounded on the waist. And it adds this wonderful circular quality to the shoe where you have this roundness of the upper reflected in the beveled waist, reflected in the beveled sole, and then wrapped up back around. The last note on design regarding the shoe itself is this little tab here. Typically, you'll see traditionally a little sort of fishtail. TLB Mallorca here has done it with this tiny little tab, which I am absolutely in love with because it operates so well as just a nice little accent to the shoe. And then lastly, the shoe trees. You know, it's a good lasted shoe tree when it's kind of tricky to get out. TLB Mallorca offers lasted shoe trees. These are very beautiful. They have a nice finish to them. You have the standard hole here, which allows for the insole to breathe while the shoe trees are in. And they are just a beautiful wood. They're very nicely sanded to a semi-gloss. Lasted shoe trees are normally around $100. These are 65. I can talk all day, as you have witnessed, about how good a value these shoes are. But that doesn't show you whether or not these shoes are a good value. So let's look at what $400 typically gets you by comparing it to the ever popular and iconic Allen Edmonds Park Avenue, a Capto Oxford that retails for $395. This shoe is almost identical in both price and design and therefore makes for a perfect comparison. Can a century old American shoe juggernaut stand up against a small Spanish family company? Let's find out. Let's start with last design and those three primary qualities. So the first one is asymmetry. On the Allen Edmonds, it just seems more like a almost half oval shape. I mean, you don't have much of that asymmetry. The second is going to be complex curvature. You don't have that beautiful swooping down. The Allen Edmonds doesn't really have much. It has a soft curve on the interior. It doesn't have much of a curve where the uppers meet the welt. It just sort of falls flat. Now the Allen Edmonds does have a fairly soft curve here on the side profile. But when you look at the shoe from the rear, there's really no bulbous quality. It just sort of falls flat on the last. Then moving on to the stay stitch, you can see on the Allen Edmonds, it's not even close to the vamp and it seems like it's at a bit of an off angle. And you can actually already see here, there's some loose threading just popping out of the shoe, which leads to the next element, which is just overall stitch cleanliness. Now on the Allen Edmonds, of course, immediately you have these couple loose threads and then on the vamp stitch, it's a triple stitch, which already leads to kind of a heavier looking shoe. On top of that, the stitching on that parallel stitching is not uniform. The spacing of it kind of varies quite a bit. Moving around to the rear of the shoe, this stitch here on the heel, again, another loose stitch just sort of popping out. The vamp itself, is not fully attached to the upper. You can see here, which means dust and debris can gather in that space. Even shoe care product can gather in there, which you don't want because it can oversaturate that bit of the leather and actually stain it. And then lastly, on the interior of the shoe, you can see how on the 198 Artista, the lining is very tightly tucked into the upper where it's stitched on. And the Allen Edmonds, it's just sort of hanging off almost like a loose piece of fabric that's been torn. The swan's neck, of course, the Allen Edmonds does not have a swan's neck, which itself is okay because that's a design choice, but typically when you don't have a swan's neck, you have a more beautiful sort of elegant, soft, simple curve. Here, it's just a kind of straight line that drops off pretty harshly. The stitch density on the uppers on the Allen Edmonds shoe is 10 stitches per inch versus 14 on TLB Mallorca. 
And again, you can really see how that affects the total aesthetic of the shoes, that finer stitching that kind of lifts the shoe. Similarly, the stitching on the welt, the sole stitching on the Allen Edmonds is only about four stitches per inch. From the top, you can see the stitching on the Allen Edmonds, and it wouldn't be so bad if the stitching didn't also look kind of clunky. I mean, again, you want the sole edge from the top down to highlight the upper, to highlight the last. But on the Allen Edmonds where you can see that sloppy stitching, it distracts from the overall form of the shoe. And there's no welt fudging either, which again, you can see on TLB Mallorca how that fudging provides this very nice decorative outline, almost like the framing of a picture. And then looking at the welt joint on the Allen Edmonds, to their credit, it is well done. It's relatively flush. And then doing the fingernail test on the edge, it's overlapping so dramatically on the Allen Edmonds that you can feel it. And then you can completely catch, I mean, I can really push and my fingernail just digs right in. When this edge here, I've dyed it myself, but if you buy a new Allen Edmonds Park Ave, you'll be able to see the sole edge compared to the welt. So the dye work isn't even really there at all compared to the TLB Mallorca, which is a perfect pitch black all around. And then on the heel stack, it's actually pretty good. That it doesn't catch quite that bad on the heel stack on the Allen Edmonds. And there's no wheeling, there's no decoration of any kind on the heel block here. It extends further out than the uppers. And this is a really good example because the Allen Edmonds shoe, that heel block being extended out really just holds the shoe down. And then the evenness of the layers you can see compared to TLB Mallorca, Allen Edmonds sort of has this wavy quality to the layers and they're uneven in thickness. Moving down to the sole, of course I've worn this a few times so we can look past that. Allen Edmonds has this open channel here and you can immediately see the difference between an open and a closed channel sole. I've only worn these a few times and you can already see the stitching starting to fray and deteriorate, that important stitching that holds the whole shoe together. The waist width on the Allen Edmonds is a little over two and a half, it's about two and five eighths, and you can really see how that changes the whole silhouette of the bottom of the shoe. There's no bevel, it's a totally flat waist, and the top lift on the Allen Edmonds is just full rubber, there's no leather, there's no decorative nails. And then moving back up the shoe, you have no beveled waist, it's just a flat square waist here. And then going to the very back, you see this has this kind of fishtail I was describing earlier. That itself is okay, but more importantly, you can see the stitching here is just a bit off and it lacks the kind of refinement and quality execution that the 198 Artista has. 